the application advice which was issued by the planning department to the developer and this states that one further dwelling would be acceptable but due to narrow access more dwellings would require wider access. This application is of course for two further dwellings. Chair, I know that the developer is looking to widen the access very slightly but crucially not at the point at which the road meets Quality Village and this surely is the point at which wider access is needed. Chair, it is because of the limited access given the current highway layout that I do believe and in the ND urge this committee to refuse the application. <coughs> Chair, finally turning to a subject which seems to have been familiar for this planning committee in particular, the issue of bats. I know that the applicant has furnished the council with a report suggesting that there is no evidence of bat, bats at the site. But let's, let's just take a, a closer look at this survey and specifically to the paragraph in which it says we cannot completely eliminate the possibility of important ecological features being found through further investigation. <coughs> now, it is in that context that I do say that residents have shown me videos and photographs of bats at the time of dusk at this site, and hopefully one of the photographs is making its way around the committee now. Indeed, when I met with residents to discuss these plans, some had taken the time to create a banner with the phrase, save our bats, across it. Furthermore, I note that the bat survey suggests that trees in the site are young. Well, owing to the diligence of the residents behind me, in further investigating by measuring the width of the sycamore at the site, I can tell you that some of the trees are as old as 80 years old. Now, far be it from me to question the report, but surely some weight must be given by this committee to the evidence of residents who testify to seeing bats regularly on this site for many years, and also the fact that this report seems to concentrate on the absence of roosts rather than a negative impact on the flight path of bats or their resting spaces, which is also forbidden by current le legislation and regulations. Chair, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, can I open this up to the committee, please? Thanks, thanks, Chair. I don't want to come across as somebody who's obsessed with access width, uh, but I think this one is particularly relevant. Uh, again, I found the site visit uh, knowing the area anyway, but also the site visit, um, the access of just over three metres along the side of this property. Looking on the map that's provided as part of the papers, it looks like quite an open, uh, an open area with plenty of open aspects, whereas members who attended the site visit will know. In effect, most of this site is uh, bounded off, either by the car park or the lighthouse pub, which you can't cross, uh, go across the, the, the car park to get to this particular site, and you can't go across the field at the back because that's fenced off, and there are properties on the other three sides. Indeed, when the Anthony Cottage was built, uh, concerns were raised by people in the area, uh, by the Trade Association, uh, notably at the time, about the problems of access to Anthony Cottage. Uh, on a request to the Highways Department from me last year, the Highways Department said that traffic regulations at the junction of this road uh, onto Walsy Village would not be possible uh, because of the nature of the road, because it is a commercial road, not a residential road, with a high volume of traffic coming in going throughout the day, not only at peak periods, as we saw with the previous application uh, for the properties in Prenton, when a wider access road uh, was felt to be the minimum of 5.5 metres. Uh, the Ward Councillor has made points about the bats. Uh, I am not uh, an expert by any means, but my concerns for this development are that it is overdevelopment of a site that was previously used for allotments. It hasn't been developed before for that reason, because of the access, because it is landlocked. Uh, I'm concerned about the impact this particular development will have, not only on the people living in Sunday Ways Road, but as I say, on the access and the road safety on Wallace Village itself. I believe that the scale of this development does not relate well to the surrounding properties, particularly Sandy Ways Road. Um, we have two properties at the front, 240 and 240B, I think it is, Wallacey Village. Both properties are derelict. Uh, if the developer had any um, imagination, there would have been an attempt to bring those two properties back into use uh, and to make better use of the site. As it is, the people living in that area are faced with two derelict properties at the front, 
a new property at the back, two further bungalows at the back, and then a car park to a pub. That, in my, in my view, is overdevelopment of that particular site. And it's lack of imagination by the applicants. I accept we can't do anything about that. That's the applicant's choice uh, to build two bungalows. And let's be clear, there is only an application to build two bungalows here because the applicant knows that an application to build two houses would be unacceptable. That's the only reason there are two bungalows on this application. There is a notified need for bungalows at this site. There's no housing report that says bungalows are particularly needed on this location. It is purely because the applicant knows they would not get away with building two houses because of the overmassing on this site and the poor access from water to need. So I do have a move uh, reasons for refusal, in case Councillor Fox wants to move approval before I get to it. Um, so I do have a move of uh, reasons for refusal. Uh, I am concerned about the overall standard of immunity, uh, the character of the area, and that if this application is approved, it will be cramped and overdeveloped. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Steve? I'll say another move of approval. I'd love to be with. Um, the, I mean, the, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I've looked, I looked at the site, and by, by any stretch of imagination, it's not ideal for, for housing. Um, it's up the way as it is. But surely, if we are being imaginative about numbers and moving into areas to get developments rather than other areas that have been highlighted in recent meetings and, and uh, plans, then surely we're going to have to either not not bend the rules. I think I think it's looking on the webcam. I think Stuart said we have to be uh, over optimistic or we have to be imaginative. And I don't think it's a, it's an ideal site. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I could well support the, the issue of, around access. I, I just need to hear from the, the engineers. Uh, you know, the fact that it will only be two properties, possibly two, three cars, movements, what their view is, it's, you know, it's a narrow, narrow access, is it not? However, the person at the cottage has to use that access, um, and I just want to know the, the overall impact, and, you know, are there other sites in, in Will that, 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 that are similar to this? And, do we have any action records from them? Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Councillor. Um, given the, the, the relatively low volumes of traffic uh, that is generated from the proposed site, uh, we do not consider that the, uh, the use of the existing access to be unsafe. And I would expect only uh, a negligible increase in the number of uh, vehicle conflicts arising along the access drive. Uh, those frequently accessing the proposed dwellings uh, will be familiar with it. And generally, the access layout and the layout of the highway network in the vicinity would induce uh, low traffic speeds. Uh, the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service have reviewed the plan developments um, and have no objections based on access as the road width is sufficient uh, to accommodate their appliances. Consideration of the accident data has demonstrated that the access does not suffer uh, from a poor accident record. Okay, sorry, I didn't quite get that. Are we saying that an emergency vehicle? Road at the start from Wallace Village is just over three metres wide. But then, when you get to Anchor Cottage, it takes away some of the garden of that property and widens out to five metres, going to just over six metres where it's adjacent to the properties and where the German space is on. Does that? Thank you. And, and, and just because there seems a little bit of confusion, what, what emergency vehicles could or could be put down at the narrowest point? Fire plans is going to put down it. But we normally expect an development of this scale when the road isn't particularly long and it's only three dwellings. It's just traffic for the dwellings that would be using it mainly. Thank you. Thanks. 
son, um, Mary? Yeah, but don't we have to make some sort of contingency for emergency vehicles? If the house goes on fire, you don't have a fire engine. Councillor, yeah, the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service are, are happy with the with the, to the access as it is now. We can safely uh, facilitate a fire appliances, which is two and a half metres. And what about ambulances? It's not about the actual ambulances. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be similar size, if not less, than the fire appliances, so yes, it'd be able to facilitate. Does anybody else want to speak before we move to the future? Yeah, thanks. You want to speak? Please, I'll ask people to point somewhere. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, Councillor Fargus rightly says that this application is not ideal. And I think anybody who's visited the site would say the same. I don't see how, as a planning committee, we would knowingly approve an application that we consider not to be ideal. Because we have to consider every application on its merits. I can't compare it to other applications or what we'd like to see or what's gone before. We have to look at the application before us. If an application is not ideal, in the words, and I agree with you, <coughs> Councillor Fox, if an application is not ideal, why would we approve it? Why would we approve it? Because then we're giving a green light to other applicants to come forward with other applications in other sites that are equally not ideal, expecting them to be approved. So my concern with this one is, that this, and go back to the access, we're going to be a bit of an access um, obsessive region. But the access, um, I think the highways officer said that the access for the three properties, if we approve this application, that the residents of those three properties would be familiar with the layout of the road. That's not the point. The point is that people using Wallasey Village, who are not familiar with this blind corner, who are not familiar with the fact that there are now three properties behind a derelict shop, where no traffic regulation law is in place, where there are frequently parked cars on both sides of the road, because thankfully Wallace Village is doing quite well, not least the Lighthouse Pub, most evenings, it is impossible to see the traffic coming out of this of Anchor Cottage at peak hours when the pub is busy. It is impossible to, at the weekends when the shops are busy. My concern is not for the people in the houses with their access, because it's clear that they'll just have to wait until there is a gap in the traffic. My concern is about the impact this will have on the traffic on the road, policy roads coming down, and the people will not be able to see traffic coming in and out because there are parked vehicles either side with no traffic regulations in place. I believe this development is overdevelopment and it's cramped, and, uh, sorry, it's a cramped and it's to a scale that is not acceptable for a road of that width. Thank you. Can I just go back to, to the uh, highways officer and ask the question? We, we talked about um, the 5.5 with um, earlier. Are you saying that the what you're looking at is guidelines, so therefore it's open to interpretation? This this is a private access, uh, so the, the three point two is admitted within the council's access standards. Does anybody else want to speak before I go back to you? There is in reason to Miracles do happen. Uh, I would uh, move, Chair, that this committee refuses the application uh, using policy HS4 part one, that it is not of a scale that relates well to the surrounding properties. Uh, and in the, the uh, effect of this application on the standard of amenity and character of the area would result in a cramped and overdevelopment, uh, overdevelopment of an existing site. The proposal would result in a form of development having a cramped and overdeveloped appearance. Okay, um, Councillor Lucas, I'm just going to refusal. Second, David Dalton. All those in favour of refusal of this application? Okay, that's lost. Um, moving to uh, the original application, um, do we have a mover subject to the conditions listed? Sam, thank you. Do we have a seconder? You need a seconder? Yeah, thanks, George. All those in favour of uh, approval?
from this application? Okay, so we're just uh, looking for approval. We've got a mover, Dean, a seconder, David. All those in favour?
the members adopt the um, Great Britain Conservation Area Management Plan um, as a basis for the next strategic policies and actions for the future management of the area. Okay, any questions of the applicant for this one? Couldn't, couldn't let this pass, it's board is my role, um, couldn't let it pass without making a comment about the terrific work of friends of Floyd Big Bill, and the one who consoles the evening and contributes to the fact that they are fantastic work and they should be very proud. Thank you very much. Okay, can we have a move for this, please? Thank you. Joan, I'll second it by all those in favour. Okay, thank you. If we move now, if we move now to agenda item 13, uh, which is pages 5 and 5 to 5 to 2 in your packs. Nice one <laughs> Thank you, Steve. George. Chair. Can we go to Councillor Davis back in? Can I just ask you a quick legal question in effect? These are delegated items that have been decided under the delegated powers. Does a councillor involved in those applications need to when the application is actually approved? Not strictly speaking, it doesn't have to, but on the fact that the councillor has already decided 